Hey guys, Jason, Mike, the Escape Room guys. You almost said Mike, didn't I you? did. <laughs> uh, I stopped myself and corrected on the fly, but we're here for another episode of Interview with the Escape Room guys. We're in Denver, Colorado at Puzza with uh, co founder uh, Ryan and Nick, who is one of their designers and jack of all trades. So, you guys probably don't know the drill, but we do, so we're just going to get into it. Let's How long have you guys been open? Uh, we've been open four years. We opened in uh, Halloween 2014, and we opened our second location at the Flatiron Mall in Broomfield about two and a half years ago, and we're opening our third location in Santa Fe next month, March awesome. 2019. Right. Very good. Expanding. Always, always yes. a good sign. Uh, give us a, a little bit on what these rooms are, like the themes and what their, some of your favorites are. Sure. Our four games that are Denver location, um, our original game is called TikTok. You're a team of detectives trying to disarm a bomb that was planted by a mad composer. So you have to follow different clues that he's left for you to give you hints about how to disarm the bomb, but all the while he's taunting you and providing you with a little bit of information Very along cool. the way. Um, after that, we have Kazam, which is the game that you guys played. Where we are right now, Kazam is a magician's attic that you're exploring, trying to figure out where the magician has disappeared to. We have a uh, secret. Attic, that explains the window. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I must have missed that part earlier. <laughs> Uh, we have a secret agent game called Mask. That's the most unique of the games we have because it's score-based. So instead of just winning or losing, at the end you get a score, and you're trying to score as many points as possible throughout the game. And we have different levels of completion based on how many points you score. Okay. And then our last game is called Iris, and it's a time travel-themed game. Oh, cool. Very cool. Uh, so, Azure, uh, tell us a little bit about the design philosophy that you use when creating your rooms. So we usually start out and people propose ideas, people propose themes, people propose puzzles. Eventually we'll settle on a theme that we think um, can really relate to our audience. I mean, we take families, we take corporate groups, we take thrill seekers, we take tourists. So we're trying to have themes that appeal to all these groups without being too bland. Um, not being too bland, not being too watered down for too many people. So once we settle on a theme, we usually come up with a list of puzzles and we feel really solid about the puzzles, we'll prototype them. Uh, we have a workshop in Inglewood about 20 minutes south of here. That's where our game designers usually work, our fabricators, and our software. Uh, so once we prototype those puzzles, we're testing them with regular customers. We'll go up to our mall location, we'll set up a stand out front and just say, hey, come test puzzles. It's, um, it's very effective. And the way we do it is we'll give them timed clues similar to how you get them in the room. And then we can get exact kind of data, um, how long it takes them to solve it, how they respond to different clues. And most of all, if they enjoy it or not. So, before we spend the time building this elaborate puzzle, especially, you know, see some of these things are like CNC and there's a lot of design time, uh, we make kind of a cardboard copy and make sure that people enjoy it so that we're not wasting that time. So you heavily focus group these puzzles before you actually yes. build so, them? Yes, so that when we actually cool. build them, install them, and our beta tests are more like the atypical room that's been released for like three months because we've already beta tested those puzzles. We're not seeing as many surprises as you normally would when you're beta testing the room because okay. we've tested the prototypes so thoroughly. How often are you cycling rooms out? Um, down here we don't cycle them out as much just because we have such a huge corporate and tourist uh, backbone down here. Uh, but generally we build a new game about every six months. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, what, what, uh, I have a feeling I know the answer to this one, but what makes coming here uh, un more unique than going to another uh, escape room somewhere else? Sure. Pizzah games are built for everyone. So if you're brand new to escape rooms or if you're a seasoned veteran, you can come and you can play our games. Because Pizzah games are constantly adapting to you as you play. And if you're moving quickly, the games will become more challenging. They'll either throw bonus puzzles at you or... Buzzles. <laughs> puzzles. Bonus puzzles. 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 That, you're welcome. You're welcome, internet. <laughs> They'll either be throwing bonus challenges at you or we have some games where the challenges that you're presented with can vary a little bit in their difficulty based on how quickly you've been moving up until that point. Right. And we have ways of rewarding the players who have moved quickly and unlocked bonus challenges by giving them those higher levels of completion. So one of the things we found when we were looking at uh, rooms to do out here was, uh, on their website they say there's a standard, intermediate, and expert level. So when we came in into this one, uh, when we finished it with just under five minutes to go, um, they came in and said we got the expert, we got all the bonus puzzles. puzzles. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's kind of cool, and of course I had asked the question after, what happens if you, you know, how do you know that you don't get those puzzles, and it was based on how long you take to progress through the room. So we, that's why it took us a little bit longer, but we got all the extra puzzles, so you know, we shouldn't feel defeated for not making no. the number one on the leaderboard or anything like that. And this that. is a harder room too, so we'll have kids come in here, and they can still complete it, but they're not gonna get those three bonus puzzles that you got. 
Um, they're going to take a lot longer at every step. They're going to need a little bit more from the clue system to help them out. But they can still have a good time. Yeah. And I did love the bonus puzzles, by the way. Like, they were really unique and I think really still added to the room itself because everything in the room, like, fit Magician Attic, but then those puzzles were uh, just, like, icing on the cake type things. So. And I'm, I'm looking around as, as we're talking, and I'm like, I don't... There's only one puzzle in here that even rings a bell. Uh, and it's not even the same puzzle, it's the same type but with a, a backwards twist kind of, so... Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I was going to add to Nick's, uh, Nick's thing about what makes us unique, and I think the puzzles really are uh, we're very puzzle-focused. Our head game designer is Todd McClary. He's, um, he's done crosswords for the New York Times, his team has won the MIT Puzzle Hunt. He travels all around playing all sorts of hunts and puzzle games. Um, so he always has new and creative ideas on how to uh, execute puzzles, and it's so fun. And we have Nick and Marilyn, um, our kind of assistant puzzle designers, and um, we just have a very strong puzzle-oriented team and uh, great communication between the team to create and modify, too. This is not the same game when we released it a few years ago. We're constantly adding new things, tweaking new things. Um, we're going to add a new puzzle in here pretty soon, I think, and uh, modify another one. So uh, we're always, once games are out, they're not finished for us. We're always looking at That's game data, we're looking at everything, feedback, um, just ideas people have, cool. and just trying to make things better, always. Cool. Uh, do you have any promotions uh, you want to share? Uh, we have 10% uh, off, uh, ERG10 I believe is the code, you'll see it, I believe, uh, on their website and in the discount section. But yeah, happy to have any of your uh, loyal followers Sweet. get a little token discount here. I have a small following in Colorado soon enough. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Um, so let's see here, what advice do you have for maybe other escape room owners or game designers when they're either coming up with a theme for a room and trying to build it out or even maybe starting their own location? I mean, in my opinion, it would be just feedback, get a good group of people and just test, test, test. Um, run things by everybody and not just your friends because your friends, even sometimes will be, even though it will sometimes be hard on you. Your friends might not be the most honest people, or you might have a certain type of friends, so you're only testing towards a certain audience. Who thinks like you do. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So if all your friends like games, then you're just testing to a gamer audience, mm -hmm. but in order to be a successful escape room, you're going to need to reach a much wider audience. Um, so just take random people, find kids, uh, find adults, find grandparents, find people that don't like escape rooms, mm -hmm. and just see, what you, uh, see how people respond to things. Keep an open mind. Um, I think the worst thing you can do is just have this narrow focus of what you think is best. Um, you have your own personality when you design something, but ultimately if you're building this for other people, you need to know what other people think, and you should make changes based on what other people think. The game is not for you, it's for everybody else. Cool. That's my thought, at least. Yeah, you, you I know? agree with that. Oh. Okay. Uh, now, my personal favorite question, what is the most ridiculous, stupid, crazy, dumb thing you've seen happen in one of your rooms, or, or that has <laughs> happened to you during a room? Do you have a good story? No, I think you do, though. Which one? The date guy? Or oh. The, well, I have a couple. Can you give two stories? We got, we got time. All right. <laughs> I can do the date guy. Just, we'll just okay. sit back right. and, like, listen. So, uh, well, well, I think my favorite one is early on, early days, it was just me and my two partners, so we ran every game ourselves. At our very first game, TikTok, um, a group of young ladies came in, and um, they are obviously very, they were very happy. They visited a dispensary, apparently. Uh, so, a group of uh, stoned young ladies, you know, mid-20s, 30s, um, and they were... They were having a good time. I gave them the briefing. I left them in the room. They got through a couple puzzles, and then it just it was stuck for a long time. And we didn't have cameras in our room early days because they were still automated, but we just we didn't yet have the cameras. So I didn't know what they were doing. So I walked in the room, and all of the posters were disassembled. The frames were all over the ground, and the girls were just laying on the ground laughing. And I'm like, what's going on here, ladies? And the one lady goes, there was nothing in the frames, and just starts laughing. Wow. <laughs> just these three ladies. Uh, so I gave them a little bit of help and left, and they finished their game and had a good time, but I was just like, I, could you ever imagine disassembling everything and just laying on the ground in an escape room, <laughs> doing nothing? Yeah. It was the most bizarre, uh, probably the most bizarre occurrence, I think. I can't far. remember where I heard a similar story where people came in a little stoned. It was Raven was it? Chase in Arlington. Uh, and they just, they were like, they laid they down on the floor. On, can we just, can, can we, we just, just lay here and lay on the floor for an hour? <laughs> <laughs> That's a very expensive uh, hour, yeah, yeah. just lay on the floor. Like, just, yeah. Wow. Uh, but yeah, I thought that was We would get plenty of stoner groups, but they usually do well because most of our games are linear currently. Um, so they're very good at focusing on one thing at a time, and uh, they do much better than the drunk groups. The drunk groups are like, oh, 
Oh, God. Friday night, the last slot, or, and Saturday night, the last slot or two, it's like... That's how you're paying for your game master, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like a judgment call, because, you know, if someone's had two drinks, they might be happy and they're, they're good to go, but if someone's too plastered, like, they could, they could be a danger to themselves, so it's very, uh, it's difficult to decipher. We have big game masters, luckily. <laughs> so what was this other one? <laughs> We, so we had a guy come in, super charismatic, super friendly. He and I hit it off, and when he left, I was thinking to myself, wow, I really hope that guy and the girl who kind of seemed like they were on a first date, I hope things go well for them. But about a week later, he comes back in, and he's with a different girl. And I say, hey, welcome back! And he treats me as if he's never seen me before, uh. gaslights me into thinking he's never come to Paza before, now is on a different girl, also a first date, and plays the exact same oh, game. So he, could look good. so he could look good. That's ridiculous. And throughout the, the game, brilliant. I'm listening to him, and he's like, oh, what do you think about this thing? Do you think this could be used to solve this puzzle that we're working on? I, I'm not sure if he threw her for a loop, but it was very obvious to me. That's both really ridiculous and masterful at the same time. <laughs> So, so, imagine yeah. starting a relationship. Imagine he marries this one five years later. Like, imagine starting a relationship just on a, a lie. Like, uh, oh, and then this video comes out. <laughs> like, His name was John <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> John, if you're watching right now, we knew the whole time. <laughs> oh, yeah, God. Most groups are normal, though. But yeah, we have fun, uh, weird stories like that every once in a while. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> I think we need to just compile a list of. Oh, just, and just put the rest of the page. That would be an yeah, awesome article. Just... We can have people write in. <laughs> yes. yes. Oh, we should do that. We're, I think we're, yeah, we'll do that. <laughs> That's a great That's idea. That's a good idea. Anything you guys want to add before we sign off? <laughs> uh, our Santa Fe location is opening next month, so if you go down there, especially to play like Meow Wolf, Meow Wolf is an amazing art installation down there. Um, but if you go down to Santa Fe for anything, uh, Pizarro's going to be there, and we have a brand new game there called Nightshade. Um, it's kind of an old, like, a throwback to like the Scooby Doo kind of uh, days, the bubblegum mystery. Oh, nice. um, it's a lot of fun, and that room will have a bunch of parallel solving opportunities, so uh, it'll work well for larger groups as well. Sure. Um, and it, it's, a, it's adaptive, so even smaller groups, it can still make it linear for them. So, yeah, uh, yeah we're really looking forward to that location. It should be a lot of fun. Nice. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, thanks for coming. Thanks for having us out. Yeah, thanks for having us out. We always love to talk to owners and such that are as enthusiastic about their games and, and love what they do. and. That's pretty obvious here, so thanks for having Absolutely. us. Yeah, yeah. Thanks right. a lot. Appreciate it. No, until next time, thanks again. All right. Have a good one.